I've been a runner all my life and I've run with shoes pretty much all that time. Uh, but as a result of this research, I thought I should try barefoot running. And I actually have to say, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Humans have been running for at least two million years. And of course, for most of that time, humans were running barefoot. And modern running shoes were actually only invented in the mid 1970s. So we have this idea now that you know, in order to run, you need you need you know all you need are a pair of shoes. It's a common statement, right? Well, actually, that's not true. You don't need shoes. You just need feet. There's probably two stages in the evolution of the foot. Initially, the foot evolved for walking and also to climb trees. But at some point in human evolution, we think around two million years ago, there was a big environmental change in Africa. And the woodlands started disappearing and the savannas started growing. And at that point, new foods started appearing. And, and one of them, of course, was, was meat. There were all these ungulates out there on the grasslands. And in order to become a hunter, I think humans started to evolve running. And what we're good at is at running at, running at speeds that make animals gallop. And if you do that in the heat for a long period of time, that animal will overheat because quadrupeds cannot pant and gallop at the same time. So imagine you're chasing a gazelle or a kudu or some big animal. If you can chase that animal, make that animal gallop for 10 to 15 minutes, you've got dinner. We wanted to figure out how people ran uh, without shoes uh, before the shoe was invented because people have been running for millions of years and we're really, uh, we weren't really sure what, what happens when, when barefoot runners run and how well they can, they can do it. So we started bringing in um, habitual barefoot runners into the lab to see, just to see how they use their bodies and how they use their feet. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. What we discovered was that uh, barefoot runners run often very differently from the way your typical shod runner uh, runs. So the shoe has got a big heel that's designed to make it very comfortable to land on your heel, and so a lot of shod runners land on the heel, right? And then they bring the rest to their foot down. So when you land again on your heel, your, your body comes to a dead stop, there's a lot of mass, and so there's an impact, there's a, there's a, there's a rapid force. It's, it's like somebody hitting you on the heel with a hammer about two to three times your body weight. So when we started bringing barefoot runners into the lab, we discovered that they, they didn't like to do that, right? They typically landed on the front of their foot, pretty horizontally, not, 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 not like that, but just a little bit, so that they, they land underneath the, the heads of the fourth and fifth metatarsal often and then they bring the heel down. And when we ran them over force plates, we discovered that they didn't have that big spike, that impact transient that is typically associated with a heel strike. So what barefoot runners tend to do is by landing more towards the front of the foot and then letting the heel come down afterwards. And what that does is it converts the energy that would otherwise be a dead stop, right? A vertical deceleration of the leg. It, it converts that into rotational energy. You can understand the difference with the following very commonplace observation. Imagine dropping the pen onto the ground but falling vertically down. That's like your heel strike where your entire leg strikes the ground and comes to a stop and it's a big impact for you. On the other hand, if you're a four foot striker, then you can think of it like the pen landing at an oblique angle where it hits the ground and it doesn't come to a dead stop but starts rotating. So not all the energy, kinetic energy of the pen has to be absorbed by the impact. Some of it gets just transferred from moving down to rotation and so the impact force is a much smaller in a four foot strike compared to a heel strike. A lot of runners get injured, um, and they, what they get typically uh, often are, are repetitive stress injuries. And so one hypothesis is that that impact caused by landing on the heel, which causes that big impact transient, could be injurious. And it's associated with pain in the, in the soft tissues at the bottom of the foot. Um, it's associated with shin splints, 
um, may cause some other kinds of injury. So our hypothesis is that individuals who don't land on their heel but avoid those big impacts by landing on the front of their foot may be less susceptible to those kinds of repetitive stress injuries. So we've been studying barefoot runners now for quite a while and we went to Africa and we looked at people who've never worn shoes and they've been running 20 kilometers a day and I just decided I had to try running barefoot myself. So I, last summer actually, I was running one day and I just decided to take my shoes off and I, and I found it was just incredibly fun and uh, since then I've actually started running barefoot frequently and I have to say I really love it, it feels great. I've uh, stopped uh, heel striking and I now have become a four foot striker and, and uh, it's fun.